Comb over and draining the swamp. All right, uh, Preet Bharara, trying to drain the swamp of Albany corruption, and he just scored a major conviction. Thomas Libis, the number two guy in the state Senate, just got convicted of lying to the FBI. Prosecutors say Libis used his influence to get his son a job at a politically connected law firm. Since this a felony conviction, Libis automatically loses his seat. Now the question is, are all the other Albany guys under indictment now watching this case even more carefully? And Bill, it's a little bit of a sad story because I haven't talked to a person on either side of the political aisle who doesn't think that Libis, um, a quality public servant, he's also going through some tough personal times as well through this. There was a lot of sympathy going in, but when you read more that came out, um, he probably was his own worst enemy here, not just in trying to place right. a kid in a job that uh, was obviously through political connections, but also lying about it. Yeah. He, um, Tom Limbus is one of the most beloved figures in Albany. And, th and besides that, he's, he's dying of cancer at the same time. But besides that, the case against him apparently was the weakest of all the ones that Preparar is bringing. And so for him to get a conviction on this one has got to scare the daylights out of a lot of people. I mean, particularly Dean Scallows, yep. Shelley Silver, and, 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 and others involved. But Libis was a, ver a very liked guy, a very bright guy, considered a very straight-talking, honest guy, you know, handshake guy that kept his word. Um, so th this one cuts right at the heart of Albany, no, no question. Mm. The other scary part yeah. for the rest of Albany is that it seems like he's guilty of business as usual in Albany. I mean, it, I don't That's think right. it's that unusual for somebody in Albany to use their political connections to try to help other people or to try to get a loved one a job. I mean, there's a fine line between influence and, and you know, abuse of office in, in that regard. And he wasn't convicted of that. He was convicted of lying to the FBI. So you're right, it was the weakest case. But it's, it's a little like the Joe Bruno conviction, which was later overturned, which is that it was business as usual. Nobody thought it was illegal because everybody was doing it. And yet he's going to wind up, you know, maybe doing prison time. Certainly he's got the conviction and he loses his seat. So I think it sends... Certainly shockwaves to Sel uh, Silver and Skelos and the people who are facing Preet Bahara coming up in upcoming trials. But then just the business as usual, I think everybody mm. who, who has an office in Albany is a little afraid. And I think the other shoot, Dom, would be um, if we know these are not the only active investigations. The one we spoke about, a lot of other people um, are looking right now. Uh, this is only going to say, my God, if they got Libis, right? Um, I better cooperate here because they, I've done worse. You know what I mean? Or but, but I've been trying to say, Richard, you can take down three quarters of Albany right now. I'm glad right Richard's now. not here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he's not here. Um, we you, love Richard. And by the way, by the way, <laughs> Richard, who is obviously on the political polar opposite of Libis, couldn't say enough nice things about the guy. And and everybody to a point said it's it's really a tragedy here and it's a shame. But Richard, you know? but but what what's the tragedy if, if you lied to the FBI? Yep. Nope. And I, I think mean, if he, if he just told the truth when investigated, it, this wouldn't have been the worst. Richard, the worst that, thing he that, did that, was that's lie. how they get a lot of people. It's real simple. But the amazing thing was they didn't even have him on tape. It was a he said he said. Yeah. I mean, it was there wasn't even proof that he lied in the Okay, got but but Bill, you're you're an expert stuff you do. If there's a, a criminal case as a lawmaker against me, in this climate where lawmakers are dropping like flies, Forget wouldn't it. you tell me, Dominic, we may want to plea bargain this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is absolutely. that simple? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, this next one, uh, you may have seen, but I did a double take on it. Anthony Weiner back here, but it's not just he's in the public sphere. For crying out loud, the guy had a cameo in Sharknado 3, um, and he's already getting some Emmy buzz. I kid because I care. Carlos Danger, he's also getting a lot of buzz for his new job. The former New York congressman, and you know well what took him down, just landed a position at a PR firm that handles crisis management. <laughs> Seems like a perfect fit. He had a crisis, didn't manage it at all well. Explain this one to Bill, uh, me, Bill. This is your world here. Probably one of the last guys I'd go to. Uh, you know, it's it's funny. I did an ABC radio show last Saturday, last uh, Sunday night, and I used Wiener as an example of what not to do <laughs> in, in a crisis. But I can see him in the back room with the client saying, "Trust me, don't do this. <laughs> Trust me, no matter what you do, I've made every mistake in the book." You know, he is a very bright guy. He understands politics. He understands the players. He understands a lot of things. I don't know if, if he's the the poster boy for for crisis communications. But there I mean, are hires just to get press, right? I mean, it was there's hires to get press, and 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 I'm sure he'll bring value to clients. He has been around a long time. You're a nice man. This, uh, is, you know. a, this, this is a well-respected firm that doesn't really need the attention of Anthony yeah. Weiner. I mean, it's the firm that ran the Stronger Than the Storm campaign for Christie in New Jersey. So they they they're fairly high profile. I honestly think that it may be hey. Dominic, you've got a scandal. 
talk to Wiener, and whatever Wiener says, do the opposite. <laughs> I think just ask him on the level, and then take the other direction. I think it was think Dominic's I'll, interview actually that got that, that got the oh, former congressman. In fact, in, you know, I, I saw you, a little you, bit of B-roll in this, and, and that was just you, yeah, you, yeah. you guys are all going to gang up on me right now. It's going to be three against one. I think it's a solid good hire. Anthony, look at how Richard is looking at me. No, go ahead. <laughs> Anthony Weiner has been through the storm. He has been through the fire in a way that very few people can. Behind the scenes, he can advise a corporate CEO what is the best way to go. And Anthony Weiner is one of the smartest people I've ever met in my Dominic, life. Dominic, I will surprise you to say, I actually think that he brings not only some competency, but some critical um, experience to the gig. My only problem is, if I'm going to affirm for crisis management, what does that mean? I've got a problem. I don't want to go and say, and potentially I have a press problem too. Who am I going to advise? It's going to be in the second or third paragraph of the story. <laughs> Anthony Weiner is counseling so You're and right so who's that. already in you hot are water. About that. What? So as a client, do I want his name attached, even if he's but, giving me good counsel? But, but, okay, if I'm the client, he's only advising me behind closed doors. But he's, he's a not... public member of the firm now. And my yeah. point is, you know, if you get in trouble for any sex-related yeah, thing and he's on the true. board, let me, let, me, let me turn the clock back a little bit. Before the second incident, while he was running for mayor, before we knew the name Sidney Leathers, by the way, had anybody great, forgotten that name? Great, great, great. Before, Carlos before Sidney Leathers had popped onto the scene, and that, he had actually been doing a pretty darn good job of rehabilitating his image and of dealing with those questions from Dominic and other people as he was campaigning yeah. for mayor. And if memory serves, wasn't he in first place? He was. In the polls? Yes, he, was. he was right, in yes, Donald was. Trump position in the yes, polls in the mayoral race until this other thing happened. So obviously, his first piece of advice in crisis management is going to be don't do the thing that caused the crisis again. But he does have some experience with rehabilitating. And by the way, well, he, can't, so he can hate the post sometimes, but man, they can write a great headline. <laughs> <laughs> that was I, a great headline. I was I thinking of one. I, I, don't think I, I was thinking of one while you were talking. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to say that. You know? uh, it wasn't worse than theirs. That was good. All right, coming up next, uh, the Cuomo de Blasio feud. It has quieted down to a degree, but yet again, Governor Cuomo getting the better of his political counterpart here, scoring a lot of political points while the mayor keeps getting shut out. We're going to tell you the latest chapter in this straight ahead.